Hello, welcome to the Wellness for Humanity Testing Center. My name is Dr. Jesse Sandu. I'm a board certified emergency room physician who has extensive experience in the front lines against coronavirus. With my experience, I've developed a testing protocol which we'll be using today, and we'll talk a little bit about that. The first question is, what are these coronavirus tests and how do these results help us? The first test we'll be looking at is the PCR, or the polymerase chain reaction. It's a molecular test, and you may know this test because it involves a nasal swab, which goes up the nose or oftentimes into the oral pharynx. The swab looks like this, and it's usually accompanied by a bottle of viral transport medium. So I'll open it now. And as you can see, the swab is thin. Generally going in, it's a bit uncomfortable, but should not be significantly painful. Some of our facilities will offer saliva testing, which may be an easier way for specimen collection, especially for people that cannot tolerate the nasal swab. It's simply uncapped and then spit, seal it, place it in a biohazard bag, and then ship it to the courier or the lab. Squeeze the tip of the finger. One, two, three. There we go. What we usually do is wipe off the first drop and then squeeze. Now that you know a little bit about these tests and how they're performed, let's talk about the results. Each test has its own particular result which offers value in terms of helping us understand this virus and how to handle this pandemic going forward. The PCR test tells us whether you're currently infectious or whether you're not. In other words, either you're actively shedding virus and therefore are a health risk or you're no longer shedding virus and are not currently a health risk. Well, the antibody test doesn't show us active infection like the PCR does, it does give us an important data point. It tells us whether we've been exposed to the virus or not, and if we've developed antibodies. 80% of people that have IgG antibodies have what's called neutralizing antibodies, which will convey partial, if not full immunity, for coronavirus. This may be important as more people get infected and as we restart workplaces. We would want to know who's been exposed and who may potentially have neutralizing antibodies. We'll also know who hasn't been exposed and who may necessarily need to be protected or isolated with more diligence. IgM negative, IgG negative. Interpretation. Asymptomatic, you most likely have not been exposed to the virus. Symptomatic, you may have been exposed and the PCR result will give you more information. What to do next? Asymptomatic, continue wearing a mask, social distancing, and good hand hygiene. Cleared to return to work. Symptomatic, patients should quarantine until they receive PCR testing results if the symptoms are extreme. IgM positive, IgG negative. Interpretation, most likely active infection in the early phase, days two through four. What to do next? You should quarantine yourself from others for 14 days from symptom onset or from the result of the test. You need to be at least three days symptom free before getting clearance. We encourage you to have a follow-up PCR test in 14 days to see if there's any infection remaining. IgM positive, IgG positive. Interpretation. 
most likely an active infection in the middle phase, days 7 through 12. What to do next? You should quarantine yourself from others for at least seven days since symptoms started or from the result of this test. You need to be three days symptom free before you can consider clearance. We encourage you to have a follow up PCR test in about seven days to see if there's any infection remaining. IgM negative, IgG positive. Interpretation, most likely you're in the late stage of an infection or you have passed the infection. What to do next? If you have a negative PCR test, you are cleared to return to work. If you have a positive PCR test, you must quarantine for at least a few days and then repeat the PCR test. IgG positive antibodies do not guarantee immunity. Antibodies are produced one to two weeks after infection. The appearance of antibody is later in the stage of the viral infection. IgM antibodies start to rise three to five days after symptom onset and peaks in one to two weeks. These antibodies go down and disappear about one month after the disease onset. Appearance of IgM indicates recent infection of the virus. IgG antibodies appear a little later than IgM. Once they appear, they will rise continuously and last in human bodies for months. The ability to produce these same IgG antibodies could last years or longer. When the disease develops a convalescence period, IgM converts from positive to negative. IgG may remain positive for longer, but if there is no re-exposure, you may test negative for both IgM and IgG due to very low levels in the blood. We believe that the only way to fight this pandemic is to get more information. And the only way to get more information about this virus and who it's infecting is to test as much as possible. We've seen this model work successfully in other countries, and we're trying to emulate it here before it's too late.